Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodikant, Superintendent of Schools. In January 1967, the Needham School Committee appointed a blue ribbon panel of distinguished citizens to study the question of racial imbalance in the Needham schools. With the findings of this committee, the support of the Needham League of Women Voters, and the signatures of numerous members of the Needham community, the Metropolitan Council for, for Educational Opportunity, or the METCO program, was adopted and began in Needham in September of 1967. Forty years and over 400 graduates later, the Needham METCO program consists of 145 students, grades K through 12, who reside in Boston but attend the Needham Public Schools. Several of our high school METCO students join me for our program today to discuss their experiences in the Needham Public Schools and share their dreams and aspirations beyond Needham High School. So welcome to the program. I'd like to welcome this morning Shanice, Guillermo, uh, Vanessa, Diego, Ronald, and Trinice. Thanks for being here. I, I'd like to begin off maybe if each one of you, and we'll start with you, Vanessa, could, and we'll go back, uh, tell me what, what school did you begin at in, in Needham? Um, I began at Hillside Elementary okay. School. Broad Meadow. Mitchell. 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 Hillside. Okay, so we have some Mitchell, uh, Mitchell alum here. Great, great. Well, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's important for me to begin off since we're filming actually early in the morning. You all have a very long day. Yeah. When, uh, when, when do you wait outside for the bus and, and then when do you get home? When did you, uh, Trinice, when did you uh, uh, get, start to get ready this morning? 5.30. That similar for? It used, yeah. to, it used to be like 5. Wow. In the morning. And when, when will you, Trinice, when will you, when will you be home? Around like 3, 4. Okay. And, and Ronald, I understand you're a swimmer, so you'll be home even later tonight. Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to have to wake up at 6 for the bus, but now I drive, so kind of go late at 6.45, but my swim schedule gets me home around 10. Okay. I thought today that we, we'd talk a little bit about uh, your experiences in, in Needham. You've, you've been in the uh, uh, Needham Public School since, since kindergarten, I believe, all of you. And perhaps we could begin off about some of those memories. What, what are you recall from, from, uh, from Mitchell or Hillside or Broadmeadow uh, all the way up through Pollard into the high school, a particular memory uh, that you recall that was pretty special, something perhaps a teacher or some, uh, some uh, positive situation, hopefully positive, that occurred to you uh, when, when you were, uh, uh, in, as you've been in Needham? I remember in like elementary school we had like the family friends when we like stayed out it, like during half days and then we got to like go over some of the people's houses that like lived in Needham and it like gave us a chance to um, get to know like the Needham community a little bit and not just like only the Boston kids so it got us like a chance to get to know people and make other friends outside of the MECO program so I like that one to that. Yeah I think she's, she's touches upon the important aspect which is um, friends. Like I've known Ronald since before first grade. Um, I remember first grade, it's a little bit embarrassing, but me and him used to like make up our own like drawings called ninja chicks. We did like you know, little like chickens that used to fight. Ninja each other. chicks. Ninja yeah. chicks. <laughs> and um but but uh you know we've known each other since since first grade. I've known um G, Shanice, Tarnice and um Vanessa also. Um, I've met a lot of people outside with Mecco program also which is really important. I think one of the best parts that Mecco has is the um Mecco host families which I think now is kind of diminishing but I really want to see like a increase in that because I know besides establishing like your friends within that you establish friends within from that friend like you have that friend and then you go to that friend's house and then his friends come and and it's kind of like a social exchange with it, which I think Meko really um, tries to focus on. So. Yeah, tell, tell me just for a moment about that do each one of you over the years have you connected with a particular Needham family Mm -hmm. Does that happen yeah. for each yeah. one of you? We used to. Yeah. We used to. Back, used to. In, back in elementary school. school. And what did that look like for you? Um, I remember when I first had um, a host family for me, it was it was kind of strange because I didn't really understand why, you know, I was going over their houses and hanging out with them. But it kind of brought me closer to the Needham students because when I first got to Needham, all I saw was just not I didn't see anybody of like the same color as me a lot and I kind of got nervous and I was scared but being connected and like hanging out with them brought me out and I was able to connect with um, most of the Needham students and have bigger friendships and I think it really helped me. 
Denise, did you find that as well? Yeah, because like if you didn't like have that bond with that host family, then you would just always be around your regular family. You wouldn't explore out to the rest of the school and feel more comfortable. So that really helped you fit into the school and feel comfortable. Now you say that Diego that the program has has waned a bit and and you think it's important and you'd like to see it grow. Does not every Metco student in Needham now have participated in I that think, program? I think um, the Metco or the Metco host family was is kind of um, since well I remember since I was in it my sisters my three sisters my two sisters right after me had Metco host families and then my younger sister um, didn't have one and my little brother doesn't have one but I think now since um, I'm kind of um, like. There's a new Meco like leadership, I guess, and more parents. Are, like I think parents also have a lot to do with it. They're trying to get that program going because they see the benefit it has. So, when I think about this this long commute that you have to the Needham schools, and then this long day, uh, many of your friends, I imagine, in in Boston, are going to school in Boston and and don't have that kind of a commute. What what does that look like for you as you as you Get up early in the morning, leave. You come back on the weekends. What do you What do you talk to your friends about? What do they say about you know why Why are you doing this? Or is it now over time not as big a deal? Well, um, when I was younger, it was a big deal for me. Um, getting up early in the morning, get on the bus, go all the way out to Needham for half an hour. It was a long ride. It was very stressful for me. But um, as I got older, I kind of understood why I was going out there. It was important, so it didn't matter to me whether what time I had to get up in the morning. I knew that when I got up, I was getting a good education. Um, some of my friends do attend Meco school, so when I speak to them, they can relate with me. Like they know what it feels like to get up at 5:30 in the morning and to go out to a predominantly white school and have to deal with different situations. So right now, it doesn't bother me, but when I was younger, it used to. Yeah, and it's like exhausting. It's really exhausting just waking up so early and having to go through the day. And I remember freshman, sophomore, junior year, I played football. So then, the, then we had to take the commute ride back home, and it's just be it's like a long day. So Guillermo, why do it? If it's so, if it is exhausting, why? What's in it? What's in it for you? Well, before it was just it's rewarding. It's like you meet new, you meet a lot of new. I met a lot of new people playing football, and just I met a, I had a lot of new experiences. I know if I didn't get a chance to go to Needham schools, I wouldn't be like. I wouldn't be the type of person I am right now. And it's just kind of shaped my character. I feel like the education part of it is like probably the biggest part because, I mean, you can still get a good education if you go to school in Boston, but if you think about it, so many kids from Needham, so many kids that graduate, go off to college and get all these great jobs, and the rate's not the same in Boston. Like, My mom works at High Park High, and she comes home and tells me, all this stuff, like, yeah, some kid came to school for, like, the first time in three months today, like, or, oh, this person is just going to go work because they dropped out of school or something like that. I feel like in Needham, like, some kids drop out, but, like, most of the kids graduate, go to college, and get, like, good jobs. I feel like the education that you get here is so much better. I don't think it's so much the education, but, like, the teachers are more motivated to get the students to do the work. Because I, I noticed that a lot of since like kindergarten, just like first, second, third grade, I would struggle with some of the work, but a lot of teachers be like, oh, no, you can do it, you can do it, don't give up. Just giving us a lot of confidence. And I talked to a lot of my friends that go to High Park High, for example, and they don't, the, some of the teachers, yeah, don't give the same confidence to the students. They're like, they, they're expecting them to like fail or something. It's yeah. just like, mm, yeah. So you've had teachers, would it be fair to say all of you have had teachers in your experience in the Newton Public Schools who've encouraged you, who've yes. inspired yeah. you? Who've yeah. Is there one that comes to mind that you can think of that, that yeah. uh, you I remember, a story about? I remember fourth grade at Mitchell, I had this teacher, Miss <coughs> Tedesia, and I really thought she had it out for me. I thought she hated me <laughs> so much. And I like, I'm not that mm. great at English, but and I just didn't do that well in her class. And I felt like she was always getting on my case about essays that we wrote. And for the whole year, I, I hated going to school just because I was afraid of my teacher. And then when I went to fifth grade the next year, I could write all these great essays. And I realized it was because my teacher pushed me so hard to like push my limits and whatnot. But it was good that she did that. And I like thank her for that now. But at the time, it was kind of bad. Did you get a chance to thank her in the fifth grade? I got a chance to thank her like a few times actually. Like even when I got to high school, I saw her a couple of times. And I still thank her because I write pretty good essays now. That's good. Anybody else? Um, when I was in 
the elementary school, we had a, um, a learning center teacher named Miss Kajuski. Miss Juicy. Miss Juicy? Oh, yeah, Ms. okay. Juicy. <laughs> and she used to like always have us in our room, you know. She always used to help us with our homework, and when we did good, she used to praise us and like give us prizes and stuff. So that motivated me yeah, to do to my work. Do well. She was always like a mentor to us in the school because yeah. we didn't really have a lot of support, but she was always she there. She was always there to help us. Yeah. No matter through what, no mm -hmm. problem, she was there to help us. Yeah. And Miss Murphy was mine. She she was like during six, seven, uh, yeah, eighth grade, like during math, mm -hmm. I would have trouble, and she would always come in. She would always motivate me, like, "Oh, you can do this. You can do this." It's just you need to work on it. And I'm pretty good at math right now for it. So you've all had these teachers. You've had these individuals, counselors, coaches, I would imagine, as well, who've inspired you, who've supported you. And this uh, that experience you contrast to some of your friends or, or neighbors in Boston who may not have that same kind of support in school. And that's why there's, there's value in the Metco program for you. Um, what about the what about the education? I, I imagine I'm looking at six uh, young men and women who aspire to to be in college uh, at some point in time. Is that fair to say? Yes. yes. Are you getting the kind of education in the Needham Public Schools and Needham High School that will prepare you for college? Oh, yeah. I, what, what do you think? You're, you're a sophomore. I feel that we are because like, well, my brother he goes to Boston Public and I see the kind of work that he brings home. And as a junior, it's like I have more work than he does, and it's like is he really getting what he needs and I don't think he is like he has like two textbooks and it's like what are you really gonna do when it's time to go to college and I feel like at his school it's not they don't really I don't know college isn't such like it doesn't seem so reachable as it does here and I feel like at Needham where like you know everyone encourages us like it's like that's just obviously what you do after high school you obviously go to college and it's like it's such a different mindset that we have since we go to Needham. Like we've got, we have the ground, we have the basis for what we need to do. So it's like we're obviously going to go to college, and that's something that we look forward to doing. But I feel like if I would have gone to Boston Public, I don't think I would be as encouraged to go to college, and I don't think it would be as easy because we have we have a solid education here going to Needham, and we have the tools that we need to go to college. But I feel like if I had gone to Boston Public, I wouldn't have those tools, so I wouldn't be successful like in trying to go to college. Or even I, my mindset might have even been changed, and I maybe might not have even wanted to go to college. So. Yeah, no, sorry. Oh, well, I, I wanted to agree with Shanice and like everything she said, because um, I guess a lot of people sometimes miss out on um, besides integrating schools. I think people forget that unfortunately in suburbs the resources are better just because of the um, the type of environment that they that suburbs reside in, and um, like I, I I don't know. When I think of Needham, I think of like, like a challenging and difficult kind of competitive atmosphere because I know from like kindergarten, parents are already talking to their kids about um, college and all that stuff. And at the like the high school level, some kids unfortunately take it to you know ex an extreme, and that's all they stress about. But I think Needham does a really, really well, a really good job um, on um, their like post secondary um, like success rate and everything. And um, I know like in the long run, I'm, I have a I have an advantage over most other school systems and even like you know Dedham for example I know like I look at my um, resume or my transcript and my kind of like position on the college level and, and it's it's like it's completely different from other school systems. So college is in the future for all of you and you feel that there's been a good educational program certainly supportive teachers is there anything else about the educational program that start that that uh, jumps out at you that you partic particularly got involved in or interested in or some co-curricular activity that you really found inspirational and really helped you grow? Well, I know um, being here at Needham High School that they've offered a lot of academic courses that have helped me that at other schools I haven't seen or people don't normally take. Like, they have SAT programs here for us where we can take and they prep you and you get one-on-one -on -one help and it's a small classroom so you don't feel as stressed out and they have a lot of um, sports activities and different things that um, that you wouldn't see at other schools. Like they offer trips to go to different countries. And I know at my cousin's school, like um, they don't offer that. They just focus on the school. And if you do the work, you do the work. And if you don't, you don't. And I feel like being out here has allowed me to see a lot of um, uh, different things for me to do. Um, I know in eighth grade, I was offered a trip to go to Aloha camp in Vermont. And I got the scholarship and I was able to go and I, 
it was like being in Needham. It was a predominantly white camp, but I met new people and I was used to it, so it was a good experience for me to go out there because it was like a really expensive camp, but it was a, it was a good experience to be out there. I agree with what she said when you when you come here, like the experiences that you get are like really good. Like I, for example, like Academy of Pacific Rim and High Park, they have like two sports teams. They have a basketball team and track team. And at Needham, we have everything, like five or six sports per season. And then also about the school trips. Uh, I, went on, I went to South Africa for a month the summer before my junior year, and I don't know that many kids that get to do that. It's, like, it's really expensive, and it's like really hard. And then sometimes people just don't have the time to do it. Like Some kids probably have to work during the summer if they want to have a little bit of extra money, but even just the opportunity to do that was like really good. Like I learned a lot. I went to Africa. I know so many kids in Boston that say they want to go to Africa. They want to go see what it's like, and they don't get to do it. Maybe maybe they have the money to do it, but they just don't get the opportunity. And I got to go with my friends from school and do a good thing down there. I feel like that was a really good experience that I wouldn't have got if I went to another school. So the the, the student trips, athletics. Uh, Janice, you're on the student council, Diego, you are, and National Honor Society. I mean, a variety of different activities and opportunities for you to, to complement uh, what's going on in the classroom. And uh, by you, these teachers that, that you're quite impressed with and really feel have supported you along the way. I mean, all, all these positive things, I, is, there, is there a downside? Is there something that you're missing by not going to school in your neighborhood where you reside? What's the, what's the downside to, to that? So a lot of like a lot of my closest friends, a lot of people that I count on and trust, like go to Boston Public Schools, and I don't get a chance to always hang out with them. I know, for example, last night he called me. I was like, "Oh, do you want to go out and chill? Like, do you want to hang out?" I, I couldn't. I had a lot of work to do. I was trying to stay on top of my work, and it's kind of you know it's kind of hard, especially because a lot of them are like my family, so it's kind of hard not like kind of hard to you know hang out with them. But does your friend understand? <clears throat> yeah, he, he understood because he knows what, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a better education. So. I have a similar experience to him. Like, I feel like a lot of my friends, they go to Boston Public too. And it's like, even though, like, as an example, my brother gets up at the same time I do and he has to leave also because he goes to school in West Roxbury, but he gets home earlier than me. So they get out at like one something. So they have time to like hang out after school and things like that. But after school I like we have to stay after and then I also on top of that I bus monitor so I get home at like around 6 20 something like that so it's like my day's like gone I have no time to do basically anything throughout the whole week so like my only hangout time is like the weekends and I'm fine with that because I know it's like gonna be beneficial and it's gonna help me in the future but it's hard as a teenager because after school you know you want to go spend time with your friends and things but you can't really do that because you're coming from so far and to come back into Boston, it's like when I get there, it's nighttime, so I have to just go in. And then on top of that, I have like hours of homework to do. So yeah, you you, meant, you mentioned that your bus. Now I hear you say your bus monitor. Yeah. So now what does a bus monitor do? Oh well, we um go well. It's a this is for students going into Boston. Yeah. Okay. Um, Metro students in Boston, we go and we just make sure that they you know follow the bus rules and things like that, and make sure they're safe while they're on the bus going into Boston. Oh, that's a lot of responsibility. Oh, good for you. But that keeps you. That keeps the long, the day extended, and uh, yet yet another another thing to do. Um, any other, Janice? Any other downside to to, uh, to being in Needham? Yeah, like she said, like getting home later because some of the days during the week I work out in Needham. So it's like after school I stay after and then I go to work. Where do you work in Needham? At Walgreens. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of hard because you get up at five thirty and you're not getting home until like ten o'clock at night, and then you have to do all your homework, but. I think of it is you're gonna benefit in the future. You're gonna it's gonna pay back in the future. You're gonna do well. As you reflect on your education uh, in in Needham, what you know what what would you say, uh, particularly the the Medco program, but but really you're you're part of Needham Public Schools, and that really is is where you've spent uh, almost some of your 12 years of your of your of your education. Uh, how has your education in Needham? made a difference for you personally. What's, what would you say as you've grown, uh, and, and perhaps I don't want to contrast it to your friends in Boston, but it may be, but what has it meant to you? What, where, where are you uh, stronger? Where are you wiser? How, how are you a different person? I feel like, again, like the whole college thing, like some of the kids that live in my neighborhood 
are, like are already getting jobs that or they're like interning at places they're just gonna go straight into work from high school like like one of my friends is gonna go be a mechanic something like that but I know for the next few years of my life after this I'm still gonna be in school trying to get a better education so I can get a different type of job and I feel like that's the biggest difference that the education makes because you get an education here and then right after you're done with high school you go get more education instead of getting just a job. I mean, I'll probably get a job too to pay off like loans and whatnot, but I'm just going to still be in school. Yeah, and I think um I think responsibility is a big one because I'm the oldest one here and I have four young siblings after me that are also in the medical program, hopefully niece, you know, maybe downwards. So, um but um I think that something I really value is my parents uh, um, my parents is like efforts and sacrifices. I think being the oldest one, they've also like taught me, you know, you're the oldest. I'm kind of like, I call myself the guinea pig of the family just because, like, it's kind of like a new experience for the whole family. And my parents um, immigrated from El Salvador. So I, like, I take it upon myself to kind of lead the way and kind of um, show my parents that what they, everything they've done has paid off and that my young siblings also have the capability to do just the same thing, you know, be given the same resources and the same, you know, opportunities. And it's kind of, um, I kind of want to show them that they can do it as well. And not, not just them, but, you know, any MECO student also. So I think. I take it upon myself to be like the responsible one and to kind of, you know, lead the way, I guess. So you've learned some responsibility yeah. as you've gone through this experience. Yeah. Any other meaningful... Uh, well, I also felt like being here, it makes me more like aware of my surroundings sort of because I know like here we do like current events and things like that which forces us to like know what's going on around the world and like in our community and in our country. So, and I don't feel like I would have like really been into that if I had gone somewhere else to go to school and also here we like get to know people of different races and things like that and it's like when we go into the work world we're probably gonna if like the kind of jobs that most of us want to get we are going to be around like we are going to be in like around a lot of white people and stuff like that so we may not always be around like our kind and it's like we we're now getting used to what it's like yeah. to be around people of different races and you know we're we're just seeing what we need to do in the future so i think it's a really good experience for us to get to know that now, just on that, and, and, and uh, Denise, you were talking about that as well. You, you get to uh, get to know about other people. You are in a predominantly white public high school, and you are in attending school in a predominantly white, mostly white, almost uh, completely white uh, community. What what has that meant? for you. you. You've both talked about Shanice and Denise about how that, that there have been differences and that's that's meant something to you, but what I, I'd, I'd like maybe each one of you to share uh, an anecdote or a story about what that has meant for you, or for your friends indeed. Um, well, I know for me, over time it taught me how to be tolerant of people of different races, because when I first got here, um, I don't know, I had different views. Like, I was like, why am I out here? Why am I going to the school? There's nobody like me, and I just can't get used to it. And I just felt um, like like an outsider, just, you know. Um, I had experiences where people have called me out my name, like called me the N-word or, you know, racial slurs, but. In Needham. In Needham. In the schools. In the schools. In the schools. Yeah. How'd you, what'd you do with that when, when, when someone called your name? Well. Initially, you get upset, you get mad, you tell your friends. Um, I told teachers. Some teachers acted upon it. Some teachers, you know, acted like it was just nothing. They didn't care. They didn't make any mm -hmm. um, uh, punishment towards the student for calling me, you know, the word. And um, I would get upset. I would get mad. I wouldn't, you know, I just, I would just, like, try to stay away from, you know, people like that. But as, like, as I got older, I kind of realized, well, you know, the world's not perfect. Everybody, you know, tends to, you know, insult people and, like, say rude things. And, like, you just got to learn how to take it. Okay. And that's what I learned, how to be tolerant of people. So now, like, if anybody says anything insulting to me, I know how to handle it because it's preparing me for the real world. Like, it's just an eye-opener. Like, this school is an eye-opener. Like, it lets you know, like, this is how it is and this is what it's going to be. So. I think, yeah, also touching upon what um, Denise said about tolerance. I don't know. Um, I consider myself the minority within the minority because I'm Latino within the medical program and the medical program is predominantly African-American, which is 
a minority within the you know the white population in Needham. So it's something that I don't I don't like really complain about because I don't I don't see why it's something to complain about. But I actually boast about it because you know I feel like I'm up for anything. You know I I uh, besides you know besides the race kind of like factor, I feel like I'm com I can be comfortable in any situation, whether it's my religious affiliation. Um, you know, like where my like I'm from Boston, where my parents are from. You know, my parents are immigrants, and I kind of feel that um, it's kind of made me more secure with from like I've, it's given me self confidence, and I I kind of feel that because like uh, Shani said earlier, the world is is globalizing, and you won't necessarily all be always be working with you know Latinos or you know whatever. But uh, it's kind of makes you it prepares you for kind of uh, like a more diverse um, setting, and I think that's that's something that the medical program really um, does a good job of doing. Um, I'm agree with you. <coughs> Something else that kind of it gets sometimes it gets a little annoying, but I just, just turn the other cheek is when people come up to you in the hall and just like, oh, what up, like, yeah. homie, what's good, like, what's popping. So like, all right, you know, you're not gonna no, see need them need them high school or white white students. Yes, and okay. then you know that they're not gonna come around and say that to their other friends. Like, you just want to be treated like everybody else. Like, even if like, oh, it's a hello, how are you doing? You know, what's going on? How was your day? Like, we just want to just sometimes it's it's nice just to be treated like everybody else. It's hard to like constantly deal with the black jokes and the oh yeah 50 cent like it's really mm -hmm. sometimes it gets oh, so <laughs> annoying and it's like why are you so ignorant it's like but like I get used to it after a while like it's taught me how to just ignore things and like but it's just really hard though because sometimes I just want to lose my cool like mm -hmm. but you know, are, you know you can't are we are we you've been in Needham for several years have you seen changes in the way students may if, if they may use a, a slur to refer to you or a friend, or they make jokes or, 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 or some, some comment. Mm -hmm. Is that better or worse since you? What it's, do you think? Kind of, sort of, like in the middle, because they yeah. usually don't like be rude, but you know how the, they say it is just will get to you, but it's not that big, but it will get to you, because why would you say it? Like, there was no point. Like, sometimes they'll say, like, how Boston is so bad and how they always have shootings, but it's not that bad. Yeah. And then sometimes they'll just be like, oh, yeah, I want to go to Boston. It's so fun. Blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. Ronald, what were you going to add to that? I think it's, I don't think kids change so much as, like, how you interpret it. Like, like you be, like, yeah, you become more tolerant of it, but, like, sometimes you just take it differently, like, I have a lot, like, most of my friends are in need of just because I've been here for so long, and from sports, like, you, like, become really good friends with kids, and you spend the night out here, you hang out with everyone, but after a while, like, you just start to realize what they're saying isn't as bad as you think it is, and they, like, yeah, they're ignorant, but, like, sometimes they just, like, don't realize they it, and you just, it. you just put it aside because you know yeah, that they, they don't know what they're talking yeah. about, and you know they know that they don't know what they're talking about. So it's just easy to put things aside after 12 years of coming to school in Needham. I would venture to say that not only have you grown and learned about yourselves and your place in this world, but all of your white friends um, and those who aren't friends with you, they've learned as much from you about how to live in a world that certainly is increasingly diverse. Uh, and you have offered as much to them and your teachers and even to the superintendent this morning um, and, and over time than you probably have, have even learned. And I think that's that's positive. Um, three, of you, four of you are going off to college next year. Who's going to college next year? Two of you, three of you, okay. We're, we're, we're making plans for that, any idea? I'm very not sure, just because, I don't know. Okay. But uh, yeah, I have but an idea on this. You've got everything, I've, I've, I've got got everything, everything in your and everything? I have, I have like a really intense plan that I've had since I don't even know how long. I, okay. I really want to go to UNC Chapel Hill. All right. I know I can't get in there like now just because it's impossible, but I have a whole plan to get in there. I'm just going to transfer. Okay. Yeah. I, have, I have goals, plans. Good for you. Works out. <clears throat> well, I appreciate all your time, and uh, I wish you I wish you well and good luck at uh, the remaining months in Needham High School. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.